Okay, so now we've got the uh, now we've got the canine set, and as far as the angulation is concerned, I mean, make sure you always look at your power point and everything. But basically, they should have a slight distal tilt, and they should look a little bit like this. Again, they're not; it's not super critical because you're going to be moving them out of occlusion later anyway. Again, make sure before you move on to the posteriors, make sure that your two centrals are touching the occlusal plane, the tips of your canines are touching the occlusal plane, and that your laterals are parallel with the occlusal plane about half a millimeter above. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're moving on to the premolars. Um, when you first buy these premolars, or first buy these denture teeth, um, and you take them off of the thing, they're extremely confusing trying to differentiate uh, between first molar and uh, first premolar and second premolar um, and mandibular versus uh, maxillary. One of the things that it has um, on the bottom is on the mesial, it's really hard to see in the video, even, even here in person right now, but on the mesial of each tooth is a slight little raised bump. One bump for the first premolar, two bumps for the second uh, premolar. And they're very hard to see. If in the event you need to grind down on these, then um, you will grind those off. So you can do something like Nate did. You can see here on the mesial of his first uh, premolar, he put one one dot with probably a quarter round burr, just a tiny little hole. Just so you can always tell, because it's really easy to drop these teeth, mix them up, and then if you do mix them up, it, it can cause problems for you later when you're trying to, uh, you know, equilibrate and get centrics and everything. So one dot mesial. Now we're going to set. Set the premolars. Now I always set two uh, two teeth at a time. It, I always do it that way. Um, I always set the tooth, uh, the contralateral tooth, when I'm sitting. So meaning if I'm setting a first premolar, I'm going to set the contralateral premolar on the opposite side. Uh, for our purposes right now, to save time, I'm only going to do one one side. I always like to do a little bit more wax than uh, than you think you need. Not a ton, but a little more because it's a lot easier to push the tooth down than to not have enough wax and, and uh, have to add some or pull it off and redo it. So here's another th another trick uh, that I like to do with the posterior teeth is I mark the cusp tip with a sharpie marker on the maxillary, the lingual cusp tip. That's because it makes it easier to see when I'm trying to stare through the back. So what I want to do is basically get it about where about where I want it. Now, the first premolars, they both cusp tips touch the occlusal table. So since I know that, I know that it has to be about in line with the canine. So I'm going to get it almost there. Um, and what I can also, what you can also do is again, mark this cusp ridge, <laughs> whatever, you, you get the point. So I'm marking the ridge so you can see like a nice flow because you want to see, basically you want to see a nice flow of those uh, incisal edges and, and lines. So then I actually am going to loot this down because I want to sort of stay put. I can, the wax is starting to cool down and I don't want it to fall off, so. One of the things I did before I actually set the put, before I started setting these premolars, was I flamed, I went ahead and I flamed the anteriors. Um, just a light flame to get it kind of smooth on both sides. And what this does is it smooths everything out. Um, and after I do that, I make sure they're in position. And one of the reasons why I do that is because at the end, when you're trying to flame everything and make it smooth, you tend to heat up the teeth. And like anything, when you heat something up, it expands, and when it shrinks, it contracts. Well, a lot of times when, it's, uh, when it cools down and, and shrinks and contracts, your teeth can move out of position. So the smoother you have it, the less you have to flame, 
uh, the less your teeth are going to move when you're, you know, when you're cleaning up and, and basically putting on your finishing touches. It's also going to save you time later. So it, it doesn't take very long, especially since uh, a lot of times you're waiting for other stuff to cool down. So it's something good to, um, good to do. So now for this, for this one, I want to make sure it touches. Now we can see that it's not touching all the way. It's, there's still a little bit of a gap. Granted, it's not much, but there's still a tiny bit of a gap in between there. So what I'll do is, and you can use the, uh, the wax spatula or the Cleoid discoid. I actually prefer the Cleoid discoid because you can make fine movements. One of the things also that I'm looking for is the, uh, the axial inclination of the tooth. If you look at this tooth, it's tilted a little bit towards the distal, and we don't want that. These, even though these, a lot of these anterior teeth are tilted a little bit, these premolars are straight up and down. So I want to make sure that, first of all, that the facial surface of the tooth is clean because that, it's impossible to tell the correct inclination if the tooth is not clean. So I'll clean it up first so I can see the whole part of the tooth, and then I'll make sure that it's straight up and down. Once I have it straight up and down, I can kind of push it also. I push it down so now I know that the facial or the buccal cusp tip is, is in contact with the occlusal plane. Now if we look from this side, we can see that the lingual cusp tip is not. So again, I'm taking the point of the clear discoid and I'm pushing that down into contact with the occlusal plane. And since I've done that, I can see that it caused the uh, the buccal cusp to come down, or to come up rather, out of context. So, what I can do is take this and kind of put it in between in the middle and push it down. So now both of them are touching. And again, I can see that it's tilted a little bit. So I want to straighten it up. So it's straight again. And now I'm checking to see that that cusp tip where I marked with the uh, with the dot is in line with the lines that we drew for on ridge because basically those lines dictate these lines dictate uh, the position of the ridge and we want our teeth to be on ridge and so these cusps fit in the, uh, the central fossa or the occlusal plane or they basically this is the occlusal plane but they fit in the ri in the, uh, the central grooves of the mandibular teeth and so we want these cusps the lingual of the maxillary to be right on this line so in turn our central fossa, fossa of the mandibulars will be right on that line as well. One of the ways to do that is that that dot that we made makes it a little bit easier to see where that cusp tip is because it's easy to get these off a little bit, you know, facially or lingually. Um, another thing you can do is take a look down here and make sure and see that the dot is on the line this way. And that's another reason why it's important to keep this thing clean. So I can see here that our dot is pretty much on that line. I can't really see much, if any, of that dot. So I'm feeling pretty good about the position of this tooth. It's straight up and down. Both the cusps are touching the occlusal plane. Um, another thing you want to do is check facially and make sure that it doesn't look strange if it's too far out or too far in. You want a nice, even flow. So when I think it's pretty good, again, we re -loot. And you would do this for both sides. So after I did this one, I would actually move on to this side and do the other one. But we're just going to move on to the, the second premolar so we can show you an example of, of each of the teeth.